Hey YouTube, welcome. So in this video, um, I'd like to talk about the 10 types of manipulative strategies that we um, find ourselves in that cause us to lower our guard and drop our boundaries. Now these situations, they do, uh, we do come across them throughout the course of our lives and the 10 that I um, learned about quite a while ago and found them to be really like interesting they're the ones I'm going to touch on today so I'd, I'd like to start off by saying that boundaries primarily are for two main reasons one is to stop us um, taking responsibility for other people's behaviors feelings and emotions and similarly they stop or they make us be responsible and accountable uh, for our own feelings behaviors and emotions now two types of people typically are known for keeping poor boundaries on the unhealthy side we've got codependents or um, codependents in recovery like myself ex-people pleasers or people pleasers people with low self-esteem and then on the other end of the spectrum on the extreme side we've got toxic individuals emotional manipulators and narcissists now the codependents on the codependent side their lack of boundaries causes them to be used and abused and on the other side the toxic individuals and the narcissists their lack of boundaries allows them to impede other people's space and boundaries and it allows them to abuse others so for the first one the first uh, manipulative situation that you may find yourself in that will cause you to do that lower your guard and drop your boundaries is admiration flattery or idealization now when that happens when somebody's idealizing us it feels good it um, there's a chemical reaction in the brain we get like a high it feels exhilarating when someone's paying us lots of compliments or flatter, flattering us where it's a vulnerable spot because once somebody's doing that to us or doing lots of kind gestures or saying kind things about us if they're later to ask us for something or need something from us or maybe coerce us into doing something for them that normally we probably would feel okay with doing because of the idealizing the flattery and the admiration we struggle with our boundary we struggle with keeping the boundary or doing the thing for them because they've been so kind that um, that tactic is uh, it's good for a long con if you're going to be conning someone out of something whether it's their time emotions or money that is where a lot of manipulators will start with idealizing you and having you believe that you're this real they think you're this really great person only for later to uh, be bad news the second one is intimidation so when we feel intimidated we don't tend to keep good boundaries because maybe we're more reactive or more emotional um, maybe we freeze and it doesn't have to be the intimidation in a, fr uh, a threatening manner it can be that intimidation um, like those in a position from those in a position of power police officers doctors uh, lawyers etc things like that or it can be when we're around people that come across as confident and well pulled together maybe we're just there in our hoodies and raincoat and we don't you know we don't feel we feel inferior somehow so intimidation is the second one the third one I have is distraction so that can be any kind of distraction you're uh, prone to lowering your guard and uh, dropping your boundaries so it can be distraction as in starting a new job being around people that you don't know uh, being a stranger somewhere maybe you're on holiday abroad or even in the YouTube communities if you if you don't know anyone and you're distracted maybe with something that's going on and somebody comes to you or you know they're acting as though they're you know a cool person you might not pick up on things red flags like you would if you weren't distracted and number four I have the martyr and the victim so the self victimizing into individual they're quite hard to say no to and because typically they come across as uh, meek and mild and you know I, I'm, I'm not a well person I've had a lot of bad things happen to me we lower our guard 
drop our boundaries and that we've seen on YouTube that is a good way to see through to the long con because they tend to be the types of people that do con us whether that's out of money emotional energy or putting us up to doing things defending them maybe watch out for that one the martyr they're quite they like to be portrayed or seen as the pillar of the community they're doing all this good thing all these good things impeding other people's boundaries purely because they're defending someone so that it's it makes it okay that they may be acting in unhealthy or toxic ways because it's for the greater good you know like the phrase um old school parents would use this hurts me more than it hurts you while they're hitting you and you're just like no the martyr is the same type of person they believe that because they're out for the greater good that it doesn't matter who they knock down lower down the chain number five I have devaluing so that would be times where say you've been idealized by someone or they've been treating you really good really well and then they slow that starts to wane they pay less attention to you give you less time maybe they're not texting or messaging as often as they were um, not that you they feel closed off they're ghosting if you will when we're being devalued we struggle to keep good boundaries and it is a manipulation tactic where they pull back um, and codependence of people pleaser types especially it makes them want to appease the person by going out of their way to do good things maybe offering things to try and get the relationship back to what they believed it, it, it was uh, number six I have double messages catch 22 type situations um, emotion or being held emotional hostage so that can be when people are saying to us if you don't do this for me uh, th this is going to happen if you if you don't go and do that for me then you're not being a good friend you know they kind of put us in a position where we're held emotionally hostage we feel like we have to do things on their behalf and at, w while we're thinking of that we're not keeping good boundaries at all we're allowing ourselves to be used as a tool to do their bidding for them and the double messages is is the same thing that the type of situations where you're damned if you do and damned if you don't there's no they don't give you a way out it's the manipulative strategy the person that is using that on you not good not good uh, number seven I have criticism okay so when we're receiving lots of criticism some people will do it strategically they will criticize you or make comments about you that they know are going to cause you to doubt yourself and instead of self-validating again like uh, the other one I mentioned it causes us uh, codependence especially people pleaser types to try and appease the person because we don't like the criticism it doesn't feel good well it's a strategy number eight I have projection so this can be not just necessarily when toxic individuals project how they really are onto you but in the way of maybe it's a partner or a friend or what you thought was a uh, partner or a friend and they're saying you're a liar out of nowhere and instead of us keeping our boundary and self-validating and recognizing no we're not a liar and you can have the space to believe I am if, if that's what you choose to believe and leaving it alone uh, many of us will jump to trying to prove that we're not a liar so we're allowing them to project onto us and then we're trying to fight that project projection where somebody you know that's healthy minded they would ask you questions they wouldn't say you are a certain way and have you go out of your way to try and prove that you're not like some of these things you're not even going to be able to prove that you're not that's that's how that's the manipulation to draw you in and engage with the crazy making behavior it's so number nine I have defending when we're defending either ourselves or other people um, people that are having you feel that you need to defend yourself they are kind of showing you that they're not really that healthy minded because we should ask rather than um, accuse so if you're feeling like you need to defend yourself that's probably not um, a healthy relationship that you want to be in um, and, and it's quite apt for YouTube because we see people jumping all over to either defend themselves or defend other people it makes us reactive uh, emotional 
we don't really keep to our boundaries we just start um, reacting first and thinking later uh, and it is a manipulative strategy nobody healthy would cause you to feel like you need to repeatedly defend yourself that's the secret of it and number 10 I have familiarity again this one's good for the long con and um, if somebody's wanting to do a long con with you they will work hard to build up feeling familiar to you so they feel safe so you lower your guard relax and drop your boundaries and they can get away with further down the road asking things of you taking things from you or maybe just using you for emotional energy always complaining to you and always giving you um, their problems as a burden to carry um, and keep it keeping you attached that way you, you'll you'll know it when you feel it because you just feel drained afterwards you'll know if that's happening because of how you if you start observing how you feel afterwards how you feel around certain people do you feel drained do you feel tired do you feel stressed on their behalf because that's not a sign that um, things are healthy so I'll close off with two things to help you find the truth of someone's character well that I find um, gives us the truth of somebody's character observing them when the when they're angry are they constructive with their anger do they talk things through or do they rage slam about give you the silent treatment ignore you call you names um, say cruel things or do they try do they look for a resolution do they tell you I just need some time alone take some time alone and then they come back and they want to talk things through and the same with uh, boundaries hit somebody with a boundary a couple of times say no to the people in your life and, and observe how they react do they allow you that space to implement that boundary or are they criticizing you um, trying to guilt trip you out of it um, do they make you feel like you need to walk on eggshells uh, that you're not entitled to keep boundaries for yourself observe how people treat you because all the time we're projecting how we are and letting people know how we operate by the things that we say and the things that we do and how we treat others and that's all i've got for now thank you for listening